In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Uh, today we celebrate the third Sunday in the Easter season, and so we ask the Lord to be with us with the power of his resurrection. Let us begin by uh, calling to mind our sins that we might more worthily enter into these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth, as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion in my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Lord, you will show us the path of life. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night, my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path of life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Lord, you will show us the path of life. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him, but we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those who went with us to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us. For it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The, um, the Gospel passage of Sunday is really a particularly famous one, uh, this story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Um, and as we consider this, it's um, really remarkable because uh, Jesus speaks with the disciples, but they don't recognize that it's him. And he does something particularly profound. He interprets the scriptures for them. Um, and they both speak about what a remarkable thing this is. So they had failed to understand. They did not grasp the meaning of those words about what had been uh, said and what had been spoken. Uh, and yet at the same time, uh, Jesus then began to explain. He began to make it clear. Suddenly they looked at the scriptures differently. They saw things in a new light. 
And this is really a remarkable thing they describe uh, as causing their hearts to be burning within them, that their hearts were on fire, burning within them. Um, this is something that especially while we're not able to come to Mass, uh, while we remain in our homes, that this is a uh, time for us then also to listen to the scriptures, to let Jesus explain them to us, for our hearts to be set on fire, listening to his word. Um, now, of course, the disciples uh, on the road to Emmaus, when they got to the place they were going, they entered in, Jesus took bread, broke it, and then suddenly their eyes were opened because they recognized the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And of course, that part we cannot share in right now. Um, and so even if we're not able to experience the second part of that liturgy, the Eucharist, uh, we can still experience the first part of that liturgy, which is the Word. Um, and so we give that uh, encouragement then um, to everyone today listening to the word um, and sharing in a remote sense in the, uh, in the, the liturgy that we celebrate today. Um, this is a good thing for us to ponder. But also I would encourage us to also take heart um, and listen to the second reading. Um, when uh, St. Peter is writing in his epistle, um, he speaks about uh, us being ransomed from feudal conduct handed on by our ancestors. Um, now, St. Peter is talking to people who are just discovering Christ for the first time, and that's not the situation we're in. We know who Christ is. Um, but when we listen to St. Peter describing this feudal conduct, he's, he's speaking to people who had been living in, in a particular way, and now he is introducing to them a new way. And I think that that's helpful indeed, because I think sometimes we might be tempted to be overwhelmed by the limitations we have now, by the, um, our inability to really um, practice our faith the way we would like to. And perhaps this has led to maybe um, less than productive things, that if we've not been, in fact, um, spending time in prayer and doing the things that we should be doing, we might say that we too have been engaged in some futile conduct, wasting a lot of time, uh, perhaps, um, I know everyone's responded differently during this time, but know that even if perhaps things haven't been the ideal, what we would hope for, know that this feudal conduct, uh, that we can also be ransomed from this as well. And how is that? With, the, with something more precious than perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, the, that of the spotless lamb. Um, one of the things that, so even if we can't receive communion, I know there have been a few occasions when I've been able to at least bring the Eucharist to, to some specific people. Um, we know that the uh, um, precautions will continue, and so we're not able to gather for Mass for still for some period of time. Um, and yet there are some um, relaxations, so we know it will be possible now to at least make some provisions for funerals uh, and for weddings. So this is all hopeful, so let us remain firmly grounded in hope. Um, not resorting back to just wasting time or laziness, but confident because of that precious blood of Christ and something that we hunger for and that we yearn for, that we desire to share in once again. Um, just as we hear in the Acts of the Apostles, St. Peter stands up and proclaims Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Um, so let that also be our faith. Let that be our encouragement as well. Maybe one final thought with the gospel, because the disciples, this is the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Um, in the Diocese Superior, we have the retreat for the young men, uh, the Emmaus Days retreat. Um, so this is a time for young men who might be called to the priesthood, um, people who'd like to explore more what their vocation might be. And we encourage people to pray about that. And so we um, use this scripture passage that is the disciples discovered the Lord Jesus on the road to Emmaus. So often, sometimes young men discover their vocations in that Emmaus Days retreat. So pray for the young men of the parish. Pray for vocations to the priesthood. Um, this is something that um, should also be near and dear to our hearts as well. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we present prayers and petitions, praying especially for the Holy Catholic Church that we might still remain firmly devoted to and focused on the Eucharist, to our Lord present in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick and the suffering and for all of those who care for them and for the elderly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for wisdom upon all civic officials uh, as they lead us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those preparing to enter the church who have had to delay their entrance um, in uh, hopes of uh, the day in which they can be reunited with us around this altar. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and a consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the faithful departed, that they may rest in peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, who ta you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The disciples recognize the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And blessings upon uh, all of our parish family, and we look forward to the, uh, to the day soon when we can gather together once again.